Hello everyone and welcome back here at Feeding Terrific. Today I have another special guest. Um, it's Danielle and I'm very happy that you're here uh, with me today, Danielle, because we will talk about a very important topic and I think a topic which is, yeah, uh, was there a long time before us and is there and will be there, hopefully not uh, too, too much, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. So thank you, Danielle. Um, so maybe I will make a quick uh, intro about you and um, then um, let's take it with the most, uh, yeah, or with the hardest question, right? But uh, before we're going, uh, uh, before we're going there, a quick intro. So you're currently a talent acquisition partner, also at ServiceNow, right? So as mentioned, we will talk about a very um, yeah, important topic and we will dig deeper a little bit after we have um, kind of an overview. But uh, among them, among the topics, uh, we will talk about how you're dealing with prejudice um, against black people and in particular um, for yourself. And yeah, as mentioned, much more. So thank you, Danielle, for your time. I'm really looking forward to an authentic insight. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, the hardest question up front, who are you? Thank you. I feel honored to be here, Christian. So thank you for having me. Um, so uh, great introduction. So I'm one of the senior talent partners here at ServiceNow. Um, I've been here for about a year and a half now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been an awesome journey. Every week is different, <laughs> crazy busy in different ways. Um, and uh, yeah, just very delighted to be here today. Perfect. Um, yeah, so, so you, you just mentioned it, right? So you're working in uh, TA and your whole journey in TA started back in uh, 2010, right? So why okay. did you start there? How come? Um, so I studied a uh, publishing and media degree um, at Middlesex University um, and uh, halfway through uh, the degree, I decided that I, wanted, I didn't actually want to um, get a role in, in the field. Um, so I started to think, well, what can I do? Um, should I finish the degree? I wasn't allowed to quit, by the way. <laughs> so parents, of course, they made me, they, they said you have to get it completed. And I'm glad I did. Um, so coming out of university, um, I went on to read, um, funny enough, which is a UK job site. Um, and I started reading all the different types of roles. Um, and then I stumbled across HR. So I thought, hmm, that looks interesting. That's something I um, I can do. I like talking to people and working with people, and it's quite a people people um, focused role. Um, so I kind of stumbled across the HR uh, HR manager, and I looked at the roots. Um, LinkedIn was relatively new, but it was um, it was out there, um, and started looking at people's career journeys. And uh, say, okay, if I start off as a HR assistant and then work my way up. Um, that could be a very good avenue. And I started looking at salaries as well, of course, and thought, oh, that's a nice, uh, nice career to be in. Um, but then I, um, I fell into a stumbling block. So I was up against, when I started applying for these HR roles, um, I was up against all the graduates um, that had studied HR um, and I, I, had, I had the wrong degree. So I didn't get uh, any opportunities to interview. Um, in fact, I had one, one interview. Um, and uh, and I was told that someone that had studied um, in the field had picked me to the post, um, but everything else was rejections before I was even met. Um, so I thought, right, what can I do? And it's always good to network, and we need to do more of this, especially in our in our in the, in our younger ages. Um, I was recommended by my mum, funny enough, to speak to someone that owned a recruitment business. Um, and she said to me, oh, why don't you try recruitment? And then you can make your way into HR at a later at a later date. Um, but try a recruitment agency. So I thought, hmm, when I look at the recruitment, um, the recruitment roles online, they have these big OTEs. So they looked like sales roles to me. And I definitely was not a salesperson. Um, you know, having the phone hung up on me or sorry, we're not interested and you're not getting anywhere when you're cold calling businesses was not really um, uh, for me. So she said, well, why don't you try a sourcing role? Um, and I said, oh, what's that? Um, and she explained it. I thought, I didn't see that. I didn't realize what the differences were. Um, so I worked for Hayes. That was my first role. And I'd applied for um, a resourcing consultant. And they already had accounts one with, with, uh, with companies. Um, and that was my foot in the door to recruitment. So I had my goal set out to say, I want to be um, in talent acquisition internally once I've got my um, 
my recruitment experience in the age on the agency side. And then eventually I'll flip over to uh, move into a HR um, management role. That's a funny story if we've got the time. Um, but I've been in TA ever since and I've gone, actually, I prefer staying in, in TA than moving over to a HR role um, because I love to give, you know, deliver great news to, to candidates. I like to see the impact, you know, impact it makes uh, for them and their families um, when they talk about it. Um, and also, you know, especially when you're working internally, you get to see the people that you've hired and the great things that they, they deliver. And that just makes me feel so good because I was a part of that selection process to get them here. I already feel the passion. So that, that's very great to have someone in TA with such a passion, right? Um, but I'm wondering, when is HR coming then? Or will it come? Or it's not. <laughs> You never know, but um, I, I've just uh, really enjoyed the journey in TA. Um, working at ag agency gave me a good grounding um, mm. to be a good headhunter. And I think that was, yeah, that was the, the key for me. And sometimes I probably headhunt a little bit too much still, and we have a great sourcing team here uh, because of that that early training. Um, so moving into a, into a direct HR role, uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We will stay tuned uh, for sure. Um, so, so you also just mentioned uh, or scratched it a little bit, right? But uh, why are you still in TA? Well, I'm still in TA. I love partnering with the business. I like to, um, like I said before, I love um, to see the people that I've hired um, in the business and making a change. And uh, especially in the sales environment, you see that they drive, um, obviously they drive revenue for a business and you are a part of making that happen. Um, so, um, yeah, I love learning about business. And by speaking to candidates um, and recruiting for a range of different roles, you understand how the world works. You understand um, understand how businesses work. Um, I've worked in a range of different industries um, from oil and gas um, at Centrica or, or energy um, to, uh, you know, hiring people that uh, uh, dig into the ground in the seabeds to extract oil and on the oil rigs uh, from the technology side where um, they're, you know, the hive where you can turn on your heating from your phone. That was just that one company and it was so vast. Um, and um, yeah, working for Fiserv and GSK and seeing what they do on the pharmaceutical side, it just gives you so much um, experience and knowledge. Um, and uh, yeah, you pretty much can do the job yourself, but you know, the amount of times that you uh, you talk to candidates about what they do, um, you learn from them. So when you are speaking to candidates, you know who's a good one um, and who has the right experience and who doesn't because you are speaking to so many in, in those fields. So yeah. yeah, it's just, it's always, you're always learning something new and that's why um, I like to stay in TA. Yeah, no, the, um, that's very interesting. Um, I, I'm wondering, so you've seen a lot, right? Or you recruited for a lot of different uh, industries. Yeah. Would you say um, this experience enriches your profile or you as a person today, as of today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, being in the tech industry, as well is just phenomenal and i've I had i've worked with a lot of tech companies as well like by and dell um and also service now and in sono and you can just see how the world is changing with technology so it really does enrich it enriches your experience um and where the world is going yeah no that um, that's very interesting um so let's see how long you will um yeah be, be also as a, as a recruiter in the tech industry yeah. um Maybe let, let's come to a different topic, right? So um, intrinsic motivation. What does intrinsic motivation mean to you? So intrinsic motivation means uh, for me um, is, is, is a natural motivation. So what um, is getting up and go, is get up and go. Um, having a goal for something and working towards that in steps. And if anyone knows me personally, they know if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So it is really breaking it down into steps um, and working towards that. And there are unfortunately a lot of people that I hear and, you know, I hear them say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I just don't see them putting it into plan. So I always say, when? When are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Let's break it down, even if it takes five years. And um, I knew at the start of my career that um, I wanted to be in the HR, uh, in, a, in the HR function um, internally 
I started off in an agency. I worked my way um, up the ranks and it took me a good, a good number of years. And then I flipped over as I wanted to into TA and then made the decision to stay. So just being motivated is having whatever it is, is to get up and go and grab it. That's what it's so, doing. So would I be right then, or would you say something else uh, or, or differently that um, it also has something to do with dedication? Absolutely. Yeah. Is uh, it, yeah, it is to be dedicated to whatever you want to do um, and sticking to that plan. Sometimes it can deviate naturally, um, that's fine, but having that end goal and working towards it. But you have to be, you have to be motivated. You have to be dedicated to um, to what you're doing. Um, sometimes you will have obstacles, and uh, there are times when, if we're talking about jobs, for instance, where you're not getting, you know, the the opportunity to do exactly what you want, that doesn't mean that you quit. That means you look, at, you, you think of sideways steps. You have your plan A, your plan B, your plan C, and sometimes plan D. And my goal was to, you know, move into HR. I didn't necessarily, um, you know, I didn't study a, a HR degree, but I found my route um, to be in within the HR function by being dedicating and, and using that sideways step and by networking. Speaking to people is so invaluable um, because you just don't know what little gems may be dropped that will benefit you. Yeah. No, no. Um, um, that's very interesting. And I think, yeah, a very good shout out to network, right? Um, especially mm -hmm. when, when you're younger. Um, I, I'm wondering, right? So you mentioned that you um, started yeah, um, or when, when you started to think about um, your goal, right? And the congrats uh, that, that you found your way, right? And and you meant, just mentioned it's all about motivation and dedication and, and so on, right? I'm wondering, was there also a time during that journey of yours where you had some doubts or where you had like a, a situation or moment when you thought, I don't know where else to go? How did you turn that around? when there was less motivation and less dedication. How was how was it for you coming up again? Um I mean, do I uh, if I if I've understood the question correctly, um I mean, I've always known where I wanted to go, so I didn't have any kind of doubt, but if, if we're talking about should I be here and, and that feeling of imposter syndrome, definitely. Um but uh, I've always had my uh, my vision to be where I am today, um, and uh, and I've surpassed surpassed that as well. Um, and when you get to where you want to be, then you have a, a new drive <laughs> to get somewhere else. So um, yeah, do I feel like uh, sometimes I should be here? Sometimes you do feel that imposter syndrome, and I think a lot of people um, experience that at times. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, I can say it also for myself, right? I overthink uh, too much uh, from time to time. So that's definitely not healthy. But uh, yeah, that's another topic. <laughs> um, but how how did intrinsic motivation shape you, especially guide you during your life, personally and professionally? Um, so personally, it's allowed me to do a lot of things um, at a young age. Um, so I've been able to um, buy two properties, um, and, uh, and do investments as well, um, quite early on through just being determined, um, as yeah, just being really determined to achieve a goal. Um, professionally, uh, the same, I've wanted to, uh, to be a senior TA partner, um, in, in, you know, in a large business. And I have, I've worked for a lot of big names, um, which is a, a success, a, a really big success for me. So um, it's the determination and making those choices. When you're interviewing, sometimes I've been at, um, in the position where I've had two offers at the same time. And I'm thinking, hmm, which company is going to serve me better uh, from a culture standpoint um, and also professionally? Um, who is going to accept me for my authentic self uh, where I can actually succeed? That's a very interesting point of view. Which company serves me better from a cultural perspective? Who accepts me as a person? That's a very good one. That's why I'm here <laughs> at <laughs> <That's>, Service Now. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. And maybe let's have a different uh, perspective now, right? Um, let's mm -hmm. have a um, focus on, on attitude. Um, what role does attitude in dealing with prejudices play? Mm -hmm. 
Um, what does uh, what does attitude, attitude um, play in in with in with prejudices? Yes, for for for, um, for example, when when you're um, confronted with biases, for example, right, or prejudices, um, what kind of role does attitude play, right? For example, you could um, yeah deal with it like ah oh, not again, I I'm gonna ignore it, right? Or something like uh, why is he or she saying that, right? And going into a confront mode. So there. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really faced, um, uh, well, I don't feel like I've faced much prejudice, um, uh, really, but when I have felt it when I'm recruiting and if I'm trying to, you know, you know, increase diversity numbers, um, across all different ethnic groups, um, sometimes I, in my early career, especially with names, um, I have felt that, um, a lot. So there were times where I just wanted to take a name off a CV because I wanted to make sure that they weren't be, uh, you know, candidates weren't being prejudiced, uh, prejudiced against, <laughs> that's the right way of saying it, um, based on, based on their, their name before they e have even been seen. Um, uh, yeah. So I I've seen that. Um, and what I do is I just have that conversation. I've really, the, the main thing for me professionally is building a relationship with the person um, that I'm working with. So it's not about colour. It's not about um, what gender you are. It's about who am I as a person um, and who are you as a person and building that bond with them and uh, knowing who you're working with. So generally before I, you know, um, when I have a new manager, um, I really just want to understand who they are and I'm observing their behaviours and then I find a way to work with you. Um, so if I know I can't go in and say, right, we need to have... have have a diverse candidate in your in your team and I can already sense that I'm probably going to get uh uh what's the word I'm looking for I, I, I'm going to get a stern you know objection to that um then I will do it in a very subtle way and I'll move around depending on who I'm working with um luckily we don't ha I don't face that <laughs> so now everyone diversity is such a big thing for everyone it's a it, you know um managers are asking for for candidates that are diverse and sometimes I don't I can't find find enough people uh, for the for a particular niche role that we're looking for so uh, but throughout my career I have faced um, and seen that uh, when recruiting um, and it's just getting you know getting on their level and knowing what fires to fight sometimes as well um, in order to navigate uh, navigate around that if it's blatant um, and in your face then it is managing upwards and having those discussions above to say that we probably need some training in this area um, on unconscious bias uh, and often I have done that previously where I've flagged certain names upwards um, so HR can have those 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 conversations yeah what would you say then how important is the role of a recruiter? in regards to dealing with biases, not just when it comes to hiring, right? But also when it comes to the culture of a company. Um, a recruiter plays a critical, critical role. Um, and it really is, it, it, sometimes it's tough. It's building that relationship with a manager that you can have some really challenging conversations at times, but you are also responsible for um, putting candidates in front of a hiring manager. So you can also, you can heavily influence, um, you know, uh, the people that are in front of a hiring manager and providing that diverse pool. I know there's challenges sometimes finding a diverse pool with certain roles, um, in, depending on location um, and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, the, the role of a recruiter is significant in that part, you know, in that in that role. Uh, and that, that what comes into that is their business partnering skills and how influential they are and um, the research that they do, they do with the manager about their team um, and understanding what the manager's goal is um, to change. Because you have the company's objectives, but also managers, um, you also need to know what the manager's objectives are as well to make yeah. sure they hit the goals of what the company is trying to do. Yeah. So it sounds that the job as a recruiter or of a recruiter can be also like a doesn't have to, but can be also like, uh, yeah, um, change manager in, in some, some extent. 
Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We're everything. <laughs> <laughs> we do absolutely everything. So yes, we're changing. Um, and, so, and the best success stories um, is when you have really changed the perception um, of a hiring manager. And I think a lot of people, we all have unconscious bias, but it's always being aware of it. Um, mm. And do we know that we have it? Um, and, so, you know, I, I've had managers when I've, I've seen certain things, not in service now, um, where I've gone, oh, um, have you thought about that? And they felt very defensive about me asking the question. And they've instantly said, oh, do you think I'm a racist? And I said, absolutely not. But it's just thinking differently based on the selections that you make from the people that I've provided for you. Um, I'm seeing the same selections or uh, the refer certain referrals are always getting through. So how do we look at it differently? Um, and you can say it as softly as, as you can, um, but so it's some, it, yeah, it can really uh, offend. But um, from a tier perspective, that's our role. Our role is really to um, change make change in in the business where there needs to be whether it's more females whether it's more black people whether it's more asian people um women in leadership roles um accessibility pride all of those different things um uh, you know different groups sorry um need uh, need everyone needs to be treated fairly so when you look at a company structure and you see maybe one gender right at the top then we need to have those conversations yeah no, no, to have them, um, yeah, because sometimes it's not easy. <laughs> no, I, I'm uh, th uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, regarding this. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, um, did you have um, a time or situation where you self reflected and you were becoming aware of your own, yeah, unconscious, unconscious bi um, bias? When I'm hiring, no. I don't see myself having unconscious bias when I'm recruiting because being from an ethnic minority group, I know what that feels like. So I make sure that um, regardless of what group you belong to, that you, I'm seeing you as a person. And I think I probably, I have that type of, um, I think like that because I'm a part of, or I'm a part of that minority. So uh, yeah. There isn't a time where I've self-reflected and, 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 have, and have thought, have I, um, due to unconscious bias, have I not done something for a candidate? No. Unfortunately. Yeah. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe let's uh, go go to, to the yeah, next topic or main topic, right? So, so bias, bias, biases. Um, when it comes to encounter biases, right? Um, I think you also already mentioned that there's no kind of general way with dealing it. Everyone is different. Every, everyone is having a different background. So how people are dealing with such situations is different, right? But how do you feel when you encounter it in the way it doesn't matter? Um, and I haven't felt it too much, but um, in, and sometimes you can feel something or you know and sometimes it's not necessarily about about your race it's because i don't know a process that you're trying to implement that's coming from a but you know further up um you know manager might not like that so they're reacting to it they're not reacting to you so sometimes you do question yourself was that because he doesn't you know a person doesn't like me for me or is it a con conscious bias because of who i am or is it really would they have treated me differently um, if I uh, wasn't an, uh, you know, from the, from an uh, um, ethnic minority group, so sometimes you can constantly, and, and I do that, is over question. Was that because of of something, or was it not? Um, so I try to push those feelings to aside and I, aside and have to remain professional um, when I encounter any kind of, of feelings because you never know if it is or it isn't because it can be so subtle uh, unless you have something directly. Um, you know, racist or um, against you in a certain way, you can't always know unless it's extremely clear. So uh, it's just being professional and really trying to understand why someone is annoyed or frustrated about a certain, um, about something that you're trying to do every time you, you speak to them. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it does. It does. Thank you. So uh, there, there, 
there's no um, answer to any question uh, pre-provided. So uh, it's your answer, right? So, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, so, 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 so um, when it comes to, to biases, right? So would you say you, you react differently, differently to bias today as, for example, a few years ago? Um, do I react differently? Um, I'm probably more mature about it. Ah, I did actually remember one thing. <laughs> so, because uh, I couldn't remember, it was a very, very long time ago. Um, have I experienced bias that I felt? Um, yes, was. Uh, so my name, my maiden name is da was Danielle Atkins. And uh, before the explosion of LinkedIn and, you know, um, uh, and everything like that, we it was just all CV. So you would have your name, Danielle Atkins would be on my CV. And uh, a lot of people, when I spoke to them on the phone, they wouldn't necess necessarily know what ethnic group I belonged to if I did or I didn't. Um, and I remember... Um, getting um getting getting a role um quite quite an important role so i had to be um you know in a very senior meeting and i was probably in my i won't say my age because i don't want anyone to guess the company um, and i walked in and i had to represent uh, a certain business area and as i walked in it was full of the table the room was full of white men um and instantly when I walked in, walked in, it was, oh, uh, are you in the right room? Because <laughs> not only was I younger, um, you know, I'm also, also black. So it did that, that feeling, um, you know, because they knew that I, a female was coming, but they saw my name as Danielle Atkins and they didn't put that name with a black person. And even though it wasn't said, I felt it. And I had to really... Um, build relationships with each uh, each and every one of them and after a couple of you know couple of weeks or you know couple early well, several months it was quite a nice relaxed meeting everyone knew who i was and it went past what i looked like um to you know the work that i can actually deliver and i had a foot at the table um so yeah names uh, yeah names are very, very um, can cause um yeah, some feelings in with, with with unconscious bias, and you can see it and feel it in that respect. Yeah. Answer the previous question. <laughs> oh, good. No, in, in that example, right? What yeah. impact did this feeling you had as a result of the views and looks, right, to your performance in this meeting? Um, so it, it was nerve wracking, uh, and but I knew I worked hard to be here, um, harder than you're always told. You need to work ten times harder, and um, so I worked very hard to be here. And I had responsibilities. Um, I had a child. I'm going to nail. I'm going to build these relationships, and uh, uh, and I'm going to earn my right to be here and to be heard in the, in this meeting every every week this weekly meeting. And that's what I did. So even though inside I had butterflies, I was nervous, I never showed it. I turned up and I delivered and the feedback that, that uh, was passed to my ma the management team was phenomenal. So um, yeah, you just, you will always feel these feelings inside, but I just don't let it show. Now, isn't it interesting what, I mean, it, even small or big, right? But what even small things can have impact wise on you. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it does. And it grows, you know, when you, uh, and that's probably maybe why I don't even know, I haven't noticed certain things um, because I know that I, I earn the right to be here. And you do feel that imposter syndrome at times as well. Um, but I know I've worked very hard, <laughs> very hard to be here. So um, even if I have those flutter feelings, I'm not going to let it show. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm delivering to the best of my ability. Now, what do you think of, of, about people um, who still hold on their biases or pre prejudices? Um, I think it's an education piece. It's probably the, you know, the environment that they, they've grown, grown up in. Um, I think there's a, there's a, there's a range of reasons. Sometimes they just don't understand other cultures. Um, sometimes it's, yeah, it, 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 there's so many different, different answers to that. So it's, um, how, <laughs> just trying to, trying to word, word, the, what, say the question again, just one more time. 
<laughs> All good. Um, what do you think about people who still hold on to their biases or prejudices? Um, if they're aware of their biases and they still hold on to it, then that is a that is a character thing. And um, you know, uh, not sure what you can what you can do about that as long as. Um, if they are, in, if it, it is happening in the workplace, um, then it is for people around um, to, 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 to flag it. Um, I definitely say flag it because you have to understand the culture and envi um, the culture of your business and what your CEO and wider management are trying to achieve. And if you're finding in TA that someone's biases are getting in the way of um, of progression um, in the in 2023, then um, it needs to, it needs to be tackled. Yeah. yeah. Do we have an example um, where you self-reflected and realized mm -hmm. that you dealt with bias or yeah with biases differently? Um, I think, and again, it goes back to whether when. Um, when certain situations happen, is it because they're being biased or is there another reason behind it? So oftentimes uh, I've had conversations with, with my manager before um, and oftentimes I can delay raising a potential issue because I'm really trying to get under under the, the skin of why someone is behaving or um, having the bias they have. Am I seeing it as a bias or is there another reason? Was there a better candidate? Or, or what is it? So it, it does take me a while to really, I, I'm not an escalator. <laughs> I hate escalating. Um, and I like to resolve any kind of issues and ask questions uh, before I do so, you know, before um, you do so. Because anytime, you know, you, you go upwards, it will feel to someone else, especially around the sensitive topic as unconscious bias, because sometimes people do feel like you're accusing them of something. I try to understand it in it, you know what why certain decisions were made um and see if there is a pattern and when i see there is a pattern and the same type of excuses um uh, then i will then that gets highlighted so i document everything probably too much <laughs> but i document a lot so that i can really match and see if there are trends of bias happening yeah no that's uh that, um, that, that's very important i would say also in, in that context and also um yeah be being self-aware and being able to to read between the lines i think this is a, a crucial yeah crucial skill isn't it it is yeah absolutely no yeah. um how important is it um for you right to have the right environment so right you can define what right means right <laughs> but yeah how important is it to have the right environment around you um in order to yeah deal with with on the one hand with biases but also on the other hand to progress as a human being um it's critical um it's 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 everything um and before i would you know i'm going to i'm working for a company because i need to make a living and uh and then i'll move because it's the right time for personal reasons um, as you progress through your career and you get to where you want to be, you realize the company and working in so many different organizations, because I was a contractor for a time, you then realize, okay, where do I want to settle? Where do I want to feel, um, you know, this company is home? And it's, cr it's crucial as a contractor, you know, you go in, you get the job done, you you know you have an end date, you're out again. You see certain things that work, for certain things that don't work. You see those different cultures, um, and then uh, and then you can make a decision whether you want to convert or you want to stay. Uh, sorry, convert or if you want to leave. Um, when you are finding home, <laughs> I call it home. It's when you have no end date and you're happy to get up every morning and go to work, and it doesn't feel like work is. The culture, the culture and values. Um, and being at ServiceNow, I've never seen, I know other companies do it and I'm aware of it now, but prior to ServiceNow, I had no idea that employee belonging groups existed. And I have worked with corporate companies and maybe some of them, if I'm hearing some of them had them, but I had no idea that they were there. Um, so 
um, that really just shows um, from a company standpoint, the investment that they have to make sure that everyone feels like they're, they belong. Um, and that's why I'm here at ServiceNow today. That was actually the reason um, why I, why I, um, I joined the business because of that. Yeah. You know, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> I was referred. <laughs> I was referred in and I was like, oh, well, I'm not actually looking for a role right now. I'm actually quite comfortable where I am. And then the EBG groups were mentioned and I, and I was like, sorry, what? What do you have at service now? I said, is that a thing? Um, and I was told, yeah, just have a conversation with us. And I said, okay. All right. And I was completely sold. I think it's absolutely phenomenal uh, because you, can, you do your day job and we all can do our day jobs in many different companies. But it's what makes uh, service now different. And yeah, just be and I'm still buzzing a year and a half later with the different things and different events and and socials and all sorts of different activities that go on um, for all the different groups. It's just phenomenal. And I'm learning so much um, just because we have this here. Yeah. And I hope everyone um, who's within the current company can smile like you're smiling now. So I wish everyone the same, the same smile, because I think uh, this shouldn't be rare, right? This should be the, the normal. And um, yeah, I hope you, you have the environment and if not uh, work on it, that you will have it in your current one, or if it's time to move on, then, then let's move on. Right. Um, so I'm going to, to quote you now uh, from your LinkedIn profile, right? Um, an ambassador for driving diversity hires across the business and working on TA projects. A business advocate for local schools to learn about careers in STEM. So why did you choose this statement to write on your LinkedIn profile? Because um, I love I love to see all different diverse groups coming through the door. There's not, um, and I know, you know, sometimes we're limited on opportunities. Um, so I like to uh, knock that door, blow that door wide open um, to, to provide provide opportunities. And something that I did, um, you know, being being here was thinking is thinking outside of the box. Sometimes we go, mm, well, how do we find more black people? Where we do we find them? Or where do we find um, other ethnic groups? Sometimes we can't, when we're doing our, you know, searching for candidates um, and you'll see on LinkedIn, um, it generally, you know, you, you might find one one person that's diverse out of 25, for instance. Um, and you can't always assume if you're looking at CVs based on names either. So how do you, where do people hang out? And that's what I've said to my team. What, are, what interests? Sometimes you do have different groups that have different types of interests. So get to know what what uh, um, what do what, what do black people do? We do everything, of course, but what are maybe certain types of music or what, where do women hang out? Do more women do yoga than men? So you know certain key words that you'll put in to find certain groups of people in your searches that you can add when you're headhunting for candidates um, because it's in their hobbies and interests, and those things will flag up. So it's just thinking differently, thinking outside of the box to find where um, certain groups of people are in order to diversify your pools. There's, a, there's so many different things that I can say <laughs> on that matter, but I'll keep it. Stop, stop there. Yeah, no, no, all good. And uh, maybe let's dig a little bit deeper, right? So um, beneath your skin, what yeah. personal connections are attached to this statement? Um, so what pers So also with STEM, I didn't because uh, my 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 uh, punchline is quite lengthy. Um, I love working with the youth. Um, I love um, in being uh, inspiring them in in all. And I do work with a, a lot of kids um, as well through church. Um, and I love to see uh, when I go into schools and um, and I work with a, a charity called Learning to Work, and I uh, we give them tasks tasks to do and they go into groups and you can see how their little brains are working um, and coming up with new innovative things and Generation Z honestly <laughs> they are a generation that are making changes with technology um, and we weren't thinking like that when we were you know 13, 14, 15 um, with technology so I just um, love to inspire that age group um, and, uh, and, and build future leaders and especially with the minority groups Sometimes they don't, um, 
necessarily have maybe they might not have a mentor or they don't get certain opportunities to learn about the world of business um so that's why i like to go into those organizations uh, sorry into the schools um and have those conversations yeah no that's uh really interesting and it combines or adding adding on the um, topic we already had right intrinsic motivation Yes, absolutely. And it's great when they can see um, someone of color um, in, um, you know, in, in roles that are there to inspire them um, in a, a global tech company uh, like ServiceNow. So it's great to see a range of different um, ethnic groups um, that go in to talk to them and inspire. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. What would you say then? How important is it um, to have a role model? Um, I think it's very important. It's, it is very important to have someone to look up to. Uh, and sometimes you have role models that you don't know. Um, it could be celebrities. It could be um, business people. Um, it could be people in your families. Um, so it, it could be anybody. So the more, um, the more, the different types of people that your children get inspired to, or even young adult, anyone, um, the more people you are exposed to um, and you see their stories and their success story, that their success journeys, um, you can be inspired. And even joining uh, and following certain people on LinkedIn, uh, you can seriously watch their journeys and go, oh, well, how did you end up from, from there to there? And I say that to a lot of youth as well, when they're looking for new opportunities, where do you want to be? What do you want to do? If you're choosing this role, go and throw that, that title in on LinkedIn and see, and just have a look at where people have gone, because sometimes people do sideways steps that you didn't even think about. Um, and just broaden your mind to see what, um, you know, what you can do with certain roles that you go into. Yeah. So maybe a little bit um, off topic um, and um, a much more kind of compared to our topic today, a more simpler topic, right? But there will be also an episode uh, coming up um, where I will talk to someone who studied politics and is now within software sales. So it just adds on what you just mentioned, right? Um, just to, to see what can be possible. So yeah, I, I totally um, agree with you. Um, and you also uh, already uh, mentioned it uh, kind of, right? But maybe let's um, yeah summarize it for, 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 for a second. Mm -hmm. What does diversity hires mean to you? So diversity hires um, mean, I mean, it is all our EBG groups, to be, to, to be honest. So it's uh, um, black people, Asian people um, at the accessibility team. So it's uh, people with disabilities or neurodiversity. Um, it's the pr prize of the LGBTQ community. Um, it's different religions as well. It's, it, am I forgetting some? I think I am. <laughs> but anyone, you know, um, families. I mean, even people with families, um, you know, if you're a mother, um, can, um, uh, can be discriminated against sometimes uh, in, in the workplace. Are they going to go on maternity leave? Are they going to stay? Or um, do they have to leave to, to pick up their children um, if we hire someone that has young, young children? So um, I think anyone can be, uh, lots of different groups can be discriminated against, um, but it's making sure that everyone has a foot at the table um, and are seen for the skills that they can bring to an organization. Now, what does... Um... Yeah, what does your engagement look like um, being a business advocate for local schools to learn about careers in STEM? Maybe let's start with what is STEM? So science, technology, engineering and maths. Um, so it's quite, it is quite broad. Um, so what do I, I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question <laughs> again? <with STEM? laughs> All good. Um, so, so what does your engagement look like being a business advocate for local schools to learn about careers in STEM? my engagement so um when i go and i when i speak to children about stem i always talk about the fact that you don't have to be technical um to work uh, to be in that field um uh, even if you're in construction which is outside of stem um or engineering roles um in the construction space for instance it it can be quite male dominant um and it is just talking to them about the different roles um, that uh, that make a business work. So do I work for a STEM, in a STEM role? 
I do technically. I'm not a technical person, but I'm working in a technical company. So it's thinking about all how a business works um, and looking at the different functions and you get to learn and understand what the core, what the company does um, without having to be in, you know, a coder or, um, you know, an expert in expert in JavaScript or, or something like that. Um, you can actually be in sales, um, but um, but really understand technology, but not be be um, overly technical. So uh, or marketing and things like that. So some people do, uh, you know, young people do think that to work in STEM, they have to be overly technical. And it's really having those conversations from an early age, you know, from that GCSE um, time to say, these are the different things that you can do. And because we've been in our careers for such a long time, we think there's certain things when I'm thinking, oh, it's obvious. Um, when I go, you know, there's certain times when I'm going to go in and talk to talk to a school and I'm having a conversation with uh, one of the schools to say, what do you want me to talk about? I, I can't, I can't quite, I'm trying to think of something. And they will say, well, just talk about interviewing. You know, how do you, how do you dress to an interview? How do you conduct yourself? And they're going, oh yeah, <laughs> I've done that. You know, that's been there, done that. That's something that I wouldn't even think about again. That's just a natural thing. You know how to show up, but these, you know, some of these children, they're starting off, so they don't know how to show up. So you really have to, Go back to basics. Uh, um, go back to basics, um, and then also um, educate them on. I always go about the wheel of business and all the different functions. I love. Uh, I love a flip chart <laughs> and drawing all the different functions and saying here are the different careers, and there are so many careers in each bubble um, that fall under the STEM um, umbrella, and you just see the light bulbs going off, which is phenomenal. Yeah, and to be honest, um, yeah, I, I really like the. The different or to take the different point of view regarding STEM, right? And uh, because I think it in, it provides accessibility to the topic and also breaking biases, right? Because yeah. I, I think I, I didn't thought of that, to be honest. Um, and I really like this different point of view. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, I mean, I have come across a few people in their in their early 20s and, you know, at uh, party dinner parties and things like that. And, you know, it's it's funny when I speak to some females and they they say, oh, I really had an interest in computer science and I did the course. And my teacher told me that there's not many women in the course. So, it, you know, that's going to go on to university and things like that um, and have put them off from pursuing their IT roles with conversations like that. And I couldn't believe it still, it still happens today. So what I always say to children, you know, to kids, to young people, when you have an idea of where you want to go, do not let anyone, anyone deter you off that journey. If they're not being helpful, <laughs> then don't listen to it. And you continue to strive and you break down those goals. How am I going to do it? Um, and break it down into steps and you get there. Yeah, and it all comes back to what you mentioned in the beginning and dedication all over again. No, that, that's a really great uh, shout out. Yeah, thank you for that, Daniel. Um, maybe let, let, let's take um, another quote uh, from, from your LinkedIn profile, right? So EMEA Recruiting Lead 2023 for our Black at Now Global team to work on direct initiatives in the Black community. First, congratulations uh, yeah, for, for, for being the lead. Um, what is your role about? Let's demystify that. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so of course, that's my second role. I have two roles. Um, so that role, um, which is a part of the employee belonging group, is how do we attract uh, more people? And um, it's a recruiting lead role. So how do we attract more people to the organization? And that's what came out of um, uh, the conversations that I had. And we had sessions um, uh, earlier on so this year. Yeah, <laughs> earlier on this year with sessions of where do we find people? So it's not just black people? Where do we find all types of people? So I thought, hmm, okay, if people always say that to me, where do I find you? Okay, well, and I don't know if this is politically politically correct, but um, I know that I'm a, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and I know um, a lot, there are a lot of London churches uh, where there is a lot of black Seventh-day Adventists. So I'll pop that in on my search on LinkedIn, and with my titles that I'm looking for, an up popped a whole range of, of black candidates, um, you know, so it's just playing around with, uh, with words are all black, I'm not saying that all black people are Christians. I'm not saying that at all, but when you find that there's large groups of um, communities 
um, finding out and learning about what different communities do and where there are bunches, you know, people and understanding their interests, um, then sometimes you can think about going into those um, into those areas. Um, and it's the same, like I said, with women. What are female sports? Um, netball, um, and I'm not being biased because some men do play netball, but you have to look at the majority in numbers. Um, where could I have a better hit rate? Um, so putting in netball as a, as a hobby, you might get some netball teachers, uh, male teachers popping up, but it's a very female dominated sport. So you are likely going to have um, a high hit rate um, on finding women, you know, people with that interest. But then uh, anyone that's recruiters will know when you're sourcing, you have lots of keywords that you are putting in into your searches. And by adding maybe a hobby or a certain group can really help to um, to increase your diverse um, your diverse results. Yeah. So I think every uh, recruiter and sourcer who's watching or listening to this uh, totally agrees with you of course they know of course they are the, the best um why did you apply for this role um i applied because i wanted to make a difference and i love to um i love to open doors for uh, my community as well as others um of course i want to see more black people in leadership roles, um, more black people in organizations in general. Um, I often find that I am the only black person on the team <laughs> um, or I can kind of point out um, a handful of people that look like me. So um, yeah, I, and I know sometimes we're just limited by choices, not all the time, but we are limited you know, we don't get as many as many opportunities. So being in this role of being able to um, select diverse candidates uh, from my group and from others. Um, that's something I'm passionate about. And because it's a passion of mine, I'm going to do it. Um, so yeah, that, that's why. Yeah. Are you still enjoying it? I am, absolutely. And uh, I've had great successes here as well. Um, but I like to also say that I'm an advocate for all, um, all the different groups. Uh, and I'm, you know, for everyone, and I like um, fairness. Um, but uh, yeah, I like to learn about different groups and, and 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 promote and push them. But going back to being the recruiting the recruiting lead, it really is to make a difference to our community, um, turn up at different events, and show that um, you know we are present. <laughs> I am here as well, working for um, a big global tech company in a really good position, um, and I'm here that you know. If I can inspire anyone uh, as well, I, I will do so. So it's making that change yeah. and putting on events for inter uh, internally um, for our company to learn more about um, about the different different cultures in the black community. Yeah, let's go to to a yeah I would say difficult or se uh, sensitive or sensible um, question, right? Mm -hmm. in, in your current role as a recruiting lead. Um, in, in the context of the employee resource groups and so on, right? What are you measured against? And um, so we're not uh, we're not measured. However, we do have objectives um, that we want to see. So I'm in this role, uh, I believe, eighteen to twenty four months. Um, what do you want to make? It, what do you want to change? What do you want to? How would you like to make a difference? So at the beginning, when you start your role. Um, you work with your team and you list out all the different objectives. You narrow that down and have goals of what you want to do um, to um, to make an impact in the community. So uh, yeah, that's what we're that's what we do. Yeah, you already mentioned it, kind of right. But what is the purpose of your role? So the purpose of the role is to um, is to make a change and um, is to increase. Um, black people in, in our organization um, and also look after the employees that are in the organization as well, um, whether it's professional development, um, learning how to network, um, how to grow their careers, um, all of those different things. So it's not just externally in let's hire more black people, but it's what are we doing for our black people when they are here? How do we retain them um, so that this is their employer of choice that they don't want to leave? Giving them a voice 
um, to, with, with different ideas um, and things like that. So that's what I look at. So increasing ref referrals, um, for instance, there is a, a newsletter that I will be sending it out, sending out to the Black at Now community um, that we have here. Um, so they see it more, refer. <laughs> You know, it's not all about um, TA finding candidates, but refer, refer people for roles, um, but to give them more visibility and say, here you go, here are the roles, please do refer, let's increase our numbers here. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get it. Um, and maybe to, um, if you allow me to put it in, in different words, right? Yeah. Um, I think now you have also your HR component uh, to, 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 to your job, I would say. So not just uh, hiring, right, but also retention and um, mm -hmm. HR plays a, a big role in that, right? Um, got it. Um, why do you think, uh, last, questions re last question regarding that, why do you think this role has its justification justification in the business world why does it have justification in the business world yes yeah um i think we have a great ceo um bill mcdermott he is phenomenal and i i thought from what i see he wants change for all for all groups and he pushes that message down um i've seen him Uh, in action on certain at, at certain meetings as well. So it's very, very important. And I think it's very key when you have um, your leaders um, promoting diversity uh, because it can't work the other way around. It has to come from the top. Um, and I think it's just so important to have um, because it does encourage um, other black people to see and, and anyone from other any of the of the groups that we are doing something. We are trying to make a difference. We are um, being inclusive and we are understanding who you are and we're getting to learn who everybody is um, from the different events that we put on um, for the business um, as well for everyone to join to learn about different things to learn about biases um, to hear directly from you know uh, people in different groups about their experiences and not always negatives but also positives and we've had you know great celebrations at Black History Month Uh, where we've had caterers come in in, in, our, in our offices in the UK and just had a celebration and games with different, uh, you know, learning about different black celebrities and historians. And that was open, that's open for everyone. And the same in the Asian community, uh, they're doing great things as well. And all the different groups are able to put on something um, to showcase who we are, um, where we've come from and some of the challenges we have, um, but also lots of, lots, a, a lot about the successes as well. So it's just learning. It's great to know who we all are. And the more we do that, the better we work as a team. Yeah, nothing to add. That was a, a great uh, shout out because at the end, it's about the people, right? And who we are, that's the culture of every company. And um, yeah, nothing to add. Um, Another question, uh, we are almost at, um, at the end, right? But um, self-awareness, self-reflection, mental health, recharging and purpose. Buzzword bingo or what? So buzz, I didn't catch that. Buzzword bingo or what? Oh, recharging. Um, I think that's probably something I'm not so good at. <laughs> And everybody tells me, take a break. Um, I am go, 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 go. And sometimes for your own mental health, you need to take, you need to pause. Um, you can't solve every issue and every problem in a day, in a month sometimes. And it is taking that time out just to recharge. Um, and I'm learning that more and more and more <laughs> and taking that advice. I'm okay. I'm great at giving the advice, but not sometimes not taking it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a big buzzword for me. Um, uh, and I'm trying to learn to do that more and more. And those that know me, please help me to do it. <laughs> I'm going to start saying no, <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> We're going to help you, uh, hold you accountable. So, uh, I promise yes. that. <laughs> um, no, but I will say no. <laughs> I'm always the yes person. Oh, man. <laughs> no, perfect. Um, Danielle, thank you very much for your time. I really enjoyed our conversation. A uh, very important topic. It was great to get your point of view. Maybe over to you for the last words. 
Thank you. No, it's been an honour to be here. Um, and I, I, I'm very grateful that you've asked me to uh, to be one of your guest speakers. Um, so, uh, yeah, hopefully it has uh, it will inspire someone out there. Um, and just just to to showcase, um, you know, um, a success story, because I do do really do really um, see that. And I'm very grateful to be at service now as well and having the platform to be my authentic self. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel, and uh, hope to see you soon, hopefully in Munich, and the coffee is on me. Lovely. I'll hold you to that, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank then thank you, and take care. Take care. <laughs>